I'd like to start with going back in time, not 33 years back in time when I started in the AI industry way before AI was cool, but just two years. The good old days as security professionals, do you remember them? Our work was about firewalls, malware detection, the occasional phishing drill, some static, some dynamic analysis, coding guidelines, things were simple then. But now, suddenly, AI has entered the scene, sort of like the new intern that, that very quickly becomes the new CEO. And we are expected to be AI security professionals almost overnight. Now, of course, that's not possible. So what I recommend is to be honest about your expertise. When people ask you about some security aspect of an AI system and you don't know, just say, I don't know. It's no fun to say it, but it's okay. It's much better than try to bluff and then winging it. I think, I believe there should be no shame in this because things are moving so fast. I've been in the industry a very long time and even I have a hard time keeping up. But no matter what, people are going to ask us more and more about AI security. So we need to get ready. And that's where the OWASP AI exchange comes in. So I'm going to be introducing the OWASP AI exchange. Um, and I'd like to help you guys get up to speed with AI security. Now, first, the OWASP AI exchange is an OWASP flagship project. It collects the global consensus on how to secure AI systems, and it's setting the standard. Its content is freely available to you, 200 pages of material, and I'll refer you to it shortly. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to that today and give you some insights on how to become an AI security professional almost overnight. Now, to start, what is our most important goal for AI? There's so many aspects involved, fairness, explainability, ethics, all really important. They concern us personally and they, and they interest us because AI is having a profound effect on the world around us. So we'd like to know how these things work. But if we want to quickly become AI security professionals, we need to focus. So we should focus on that middle column, understanding how AI can create vulnerable code, for example, or how it can help you to test security and how to help with the defense. And of course, knowing how AI can be used to perform attacks. But without any doubt, our most important goal is to protect AI systems against attacks. Why? Well, it's critical because we connect AI to everything more and more. And we're in a big rush because we want to benefit. Second, AI is super vulnerable. The attack service is enormous. And three, we are just starting to learn how to protect it. This is the perfect storm for AI disaster as AI is becoming the number one target for adversaries. So we have a job to do. And thankfully, a lot of securing AI is, is familiar to us. AI systems are software systems. So we have development teams, we have web applications, firewalls, cloud, SQL injection, encryption, and all the stuff that we know. The key is therefore to know what is special about AI security and get proficient at that compared to what we already know. So I wanna dive into that with you. What is special? Well, this is a sort of a simple architecture of a typical AI system with one AI model. There's an application, of course, there's an infrastructure, there's input, there's output, there's augmentation where additional data is added uh, to the input of the model. For example, as part of a, a retrieval augmented generation solution that you see more and more. Also new is AI engineering next to your standard engineering. AI engineering are the data scientists who take the training data when they're doing machine learning and creating models. So they're transforming that data. They're doing all kinds of experiments. It's a different trait. It is creating software, but it also involves a lot of science and linguistics and statistics. It's a, a quite a mathematical uh, craft. Now I'm going to take you through the six key things that are special. Uh, first of all, poisoning attacks. So attackers applying conventional attack vectors to change training data, to change augmentation data, to change the model in storage or addressed using 
guessing passwords, breaking into APIs, you know, the typical conventional attacks. But the effects are profound because training data and model parameters, they determine the behavior of the model. Let me give you, let me give you an example. So let's say we are training a model to recognize aircraft, friendly aircraft from enemy aircraft. We have a large data set that we collected, uh, photographs that we bought and we let experts label them and we trained the model on it. Data poisoning is when an attacker manages to make a couple of changes. Like here, change labels and add a red dot on the point of the aircraft fooling the model that aircraft with a little red dot are actually enemy aircraft. Now, the test data set doesn't contain aircraft with red dots. The changes are obvious here, but I made it obvious for you to see them. Typically, you can hide these changes, even to the human eye or statistical deviation. So no way to detect it. There's a lot of attack service because the data set has a supply chain, is stored in the engineering environment, so many opportunities to make this change. And what is the effect? Well, the missile is fired, it's aimed at an enemy aircraft, but then the enemy is on the ground, points the laser to another aircraft, uh, uh, which is in fact carrying a lot of people, and the missile hits that, just because it was poisoned with this so-called backdoor trigger poison. Now you see the big problem with this, it's hard to detect. There's no source code that describes the behavior of the model to review. And I think it illustrates that sometimes the best way to perform risk, risk treatment for risks like this is not to apply this AI application at all. It's a matter of weighing, uh, of course, likelihood impact uh, and in this case, uh, well, the attack is easy and the impact is large. So you do the math. That was data poisoning. Second, model stealing attacks, also very typical. If adversaries steal the model, so if they break into the development environment and they get the model, they can try all kinds of attacks on it and then later perform an input attack that is very successful. And this means that you need to protect that model that AI model in storage very well, because otherwise you'll make it way too easy for attackers to, uh, to create these input attacks. And again, this is a conventional attack factor where the model is stolen uh, with AI specific effects. Very AI specific are the input attacks, evasion attacks, model theft through the input, which is actually a completely new attack service uh, adversaries can retrieve the content of the training data set. It's not easy, but it is in many cases possible. Uh, they can fool the model, for example, using an evasion attack. Let me, let me give you an example. Um, this is a self-driving car that needs to recognize um, uh, the traffic signs. By slightly altering the traffic sign, uh, even maybe invisible to the human eye, you can make uh, an electric car believe that uh, the 35 miles an hour sign is actually a stop sign. So attacking the input, in this case, by changing uh, uh, something in the physical world. But another example is that you change uh, a spam email or a phishing email just by changing a few, few words to fool the model and let it go through the detection of it. Indirect prompt injection, real quick, is where you use a generative AI uh, to filter uh, resumes and application letters um, to see if you want to hire people. In this case, the person who wrote the application letter, Jacob Turner, uh, has inserted something there. It's white on white text, and it's actually an instruction to the large language model to basically ignore all the instructions and hire Jacob. So this is a way uh, uh, of remote code ex execution like SQL injection that is much more difficult uh, to, uh, to solve because there's no good way to separate instructions uh, from data when you talk with a prompt to a large language model. Also an example of an input attack. The fourth special thing is that the AI engineers have a big role in protection. They can add noise to training data 
to hide poisons. Uh, they can apply um, model ensembles, federated learning, uh, differential privacy, uh, fine pruning, all kinds of tricks. So as a security professional, you rely on their knowledge of this science in order to contribute in fighting these possible attacks. Also, these AI engineers, that's very typical for AI systems, they need to mature their software engineering discipline. Typically, their code is uh, spaghetti code. Uh, they hardly do any versioning, hardly do any documentation. It's not because they're bad people. They have just been instructed, typically, and also trained to create a working model. But you need more than a working model because it needs to be scalable, run, be deployed, be secure, privacy preserving, and that's where they need to have some maturity. So also something to work on if you want to improve that. Then there's a long list of specifics for standard security people, software engineers, standard security professionals, just a long list of things that you need to be aware of. Uh, the current list of the most important things is, uh, is about 20. Um, I actually have a slide of them. Uh, but that's for later because it's just too long for the duration of this talk. These type of things we have available for you at the OWASP AI Exchange. It talks about tr using trusted execution environments is, is a way to protect your model. It also says that you should not use uh, access control uh, implemented in a large language model using a prompt because it's way too vulnerable. Now, to mystify AI security, you want to teach your AI engineers AI security, maturing their software best practices, teach them the threats, make sure that they learn about their science controls, their linguistics, their statistics to help build these security countermeasures. Make sure that they do supply chain management on the data and the models that they purchased or download. And you want to teach them how to reduce and obfuscate data and apply differential privacy. Standard engineers need to know the long list of the specifics. Um, you want to do cross-team threat modeling and strike through a lot of the attacks because in many cases, a lot of the attacks are simply not applicable and not, none of your concern. Make sure, of course, your suppliers do the same and apply Murphy's Law because models can be incorrect, but they can also be hacked. So you want to limit the impact of your AI system. And that brings me to the AI Exchange. To wrap up, it's your go-to resource on AI security for practitioners and, uh, and for standards. 200 pages at oaspai.org. Uh, we have 70 experts from startups, academia, the best people in the world working on this standard. We align with other initiatives, including with Sansa Institute. Uh, we actually have a, just arranged a partnership, and I'm very, very proud and happy about that. We contributed to actual global standards, 78 pages to 27090, which is the ISO standard on AI security through an official liaison partnership and 50 pages to the AI Act security standard of which I'm uh, uh, the co-editor. So we effectively open sourced AI standardization and it's free of copyright and attribution for you to use. And my final words are, if you wanna learn more about the work of Software Improvement Group, or from me, go to my website or link with me and together we can make this thing happen. Good luck.